Hey, what up, y'all? It's Steph. I just want to talk to you tonight about seeking God. When it comes to seeking God, it really takes all that you have. You can't seek him halfway. You can't seek him one day, then the next day you decide not to seek him, go a few weeks, a few months, and then go back to seeking him. It really has to be an everyday thing. I was reading here in Isaiah 55, verse 6. It was saying, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. So that's simply saying that there's might, there not even might, there is going to be a time where you can't even have access to him no more. Seek him while he may be found. The thing is, God will always make himself available to us. He will like to show himself to us. But the moment that we decide to turn our eyes, turn away from him, then of course we're not going to find him. You never find what you're not looking for. He says those who diligently seek him, he will reward them. You're going to get what you are seeking for when you're going after him. You're going to get what you are seeking for when you're really looking for his face, when you're really getting into his word. And it's more than just getting into his word. It's really about living it too. Like when I was looking up seeking, one of the synonyms, synonyms it had was to pursue. You really have to pursue everything that he says like how jesus was like um seek ye first the kingdom and all his righteousness you have to pursue his righteousness everything that's right about god everything that 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 he has said everything that he has done we have to pursue that in our everyday life he will always make himself available to us and even if we go astray it says there in deuteronomy it says but from where you are if you seek me with all your heart with all your soul you will find me a lot of people are saying that oh um there can't be a god because i tried and i couldn't i couldn't find him he didn't show himself to me of course you're not going to believe that there is a god especially if you haven't found him if you haven't sought after him like it, it is just like with just anything in life in general. If you don't find something, if you don't see something, if you haven't experienced something, there's no reason for you to believe it. But the thing is, when it comes to this scripture, when it comes to this God that I'm talking about, when it comes to this walk, it really takes every single step that we take every day that we live seeking him, seeking him in his word, seeking him when it comes to living our life. Like, if we want to see God, then we're going to have to do what he says in order to see him. Like, you really want to see his presence. You want to see his face. You want to see what heaven is like. And you will never see what it's like unless you do what he says or what it takes to get there. That's just what it is. And like it says, it says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Listen, y'all. There's coming a time where to get access to him will seem impossible. Like as long as you have breath in your body, you can go after him. You can seek him. But the moment you go, there, there, there's no trying to get it right. There's no trying to figure it out. Now is the time, especially with everything that's going on nowadays. They're trying so hard to limit your access to God. They're trying so hard to limit your access to the gospel. They're trying to limit your access to the word of God. Like, yeah, we got our phones. Yeah, we have the Bible app. But with everything that's around us, that's distracting us from it. There's just so much that's going on in this world, in this life, that is causing us to not even look towards God. God. Right now is really the time to seek God. We got to get into the word. We got to pray. We got to have worship. We got to do everything that involves God. The moment that you decide that you're not going to involve God in your life, you're not going to involve God in your decision. You're not going to involve God in your thoughts. You're not even going to consider God. That's when you give way to the enemy to take you. That's when you give way to to, to fall away and then next thing you know it, it he deceives you to believe oh yeah god wasn't really there for you of course he can't be there for you if you're not going to be around him like imagine if let's say i have my daughter right and like by this time she probably like grown up and she goes and do whatever she wants she's not even around me she don't even let me know wherever she's going 
and she like hurts herself or something happens to her and then she blames me like yes i am her father yes i'm supposed to be her protector but if she doesn't not only just make me aware but if she doesn't follow what i say if i told her don't go to that place or if she doesn't even decide to to, to have me be in a position to where I can be there for her, then how is it my fault? We really want to blame God for decisions that we make. We really want to blame other people for decisions that we make. Everything that we, that we decide, God is only going to judge us for it. We have to stand in front of God. We have to give an account for God. We're not going to have witnesses that are going to stand on our behalf. We're not going to have people that are going to say, oh, well, you, you don't really understand the reason he did that. No, no. God understands it all. He knows it all. And for us to really get to the place where we can understand ourselves, where we can understand God, we have to seek him. Like, we really can't play this game no more, y'all. Like, the, the way that we are going in this world is really making it so we don't see God. Here's the thing that I love about the word seek. The first three letters are C. So you want to see him? Seek him. Like, it, it just is what it is. Call upon him while he is near. Like, he's right there. We like to say, oh, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Yes, he'll never leave us. He's all around. Like, that's just who God is. But you have to call upon him. Like, in times when you feel like you're not going to make it, where you feel as if, you know, things are just going wrong rough and you don't call upon him then of course you're going to reap whatever you sowed that 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 just is what it is and like i'm saying it is what it is a lot because that's just what it is like when god says something it has to be that and we hate that we hate that um certain things that we do reap a certain reward or reap a certain consequence it's because that's just the way that god put it he said it there in his word like there's going to be repercussions to the things that we do there's going to be consequences to the decisions that we make that's just the way that it is and then in the same way we still want to blame god for it we can't let's try to understand why he's saying what he's saying let's try to understand um what he's saying as a matter of fact because we can read scripture and just take it on a very surface level we can read scripture and you know not even fully comprehend why he's saying it or even really what he's trying to say there's a lot of scripture in here that it might say something and you might take it for something that is not because going back to the seek ye first the kingdom and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. We like to say that. We like to say that. But before he said all that, he was talking about worrying. And the thing is, yes, he's talking about worry. He's talking about anxiety or all that type of stuff. But I really think the main thing he's trying to say is what are you focused on? Are you focused on their clothes? Are you focused on food? Are you focused on social media? Are you focused on everything else that this world has to offer and not the kingdom of God? Not his righteousness? Not everything that he said that you should do? Not everything that he said that you should be about? Like, come on, let's really get real. It's more than just being all worried and being scared and everything like that. You wake up in the morning. Are you thinking about God or are you thinking about a message that popped up on your phone? Are you thinking about God or are you already thinking about what you're going to say to this person because you still have some beef with them? Are you thinking about God or are you worried about what you're going to eat for lunch? Are you thinking about God or are you thinking about everything else? Like, this is something that I myself, I'm trying to really discipline myself on. I wake up in the morning, I have to have my mind on God. Because if I don't have my mind on God, then I'm not going to seek him. And then I go the rest of the day, and then I'm going to go to sleep the same way that I woke up. Not with God. It can't be that way no more, you guys. Like, we really want to see results in our life. We really want to see God move in our life. We really want to see God actually take control and see him show himself strong in our life. Then we must seek him and all his righteousness, not 50% of his righteousness, not what we want to agree with, not what we want to see, but it has to be everything that he says. Like, if you're dealing with a person, if you're in a relationship, 
there's this thing called deal breakers, right? It's either all or nothing. Even outside of that, when it comes to us having to make um, like a contract or something like that, when we're making a contract, we have to abide by everything that it says. The moment that you break it, it's finished. So when he's talking about seeking all of his righteousness, we got to abide by everything that he's saying. We can't say, oh, well, that part of scripture is not for me. Then who is it for? Who is it for? If it's not for you, like you might not understand it at that point. But at some point in time, it's going to really make sense. At some point in time, it's really going to show itself to you. And the problem that we have nowadays, we don't want to own up with what we know within ourselves is wrong. We don't want to own up to it. We don't want the accountability. We don't want to be able to, to say, you know what? Yeah, yeah, I really shouldn't do that because we love it so much. We love it so much much we don't want to let it go the reason that we really can't see full change in our life is because we don't want to change we all hear the quote be the change that you want to see that just it yeah it is what it is you have to be the change that you want to see you can't expect the everything around you to change before you do some of us really don't want to change we have to change and by starting to change is us seeking him seek First, the kingdom of God. What does the kingdom of God look like? What is in the kingdom of God? How should I live in the kingdom of God and seek all of his righteousness? Not what I think is right. Not what I think is okay. Not my own righteousness. It says our righteousness is like filthy rags to him. Yeah, other people might look at our righteousness and be like, oh yeah, yeah, Steph is a good dude. Yeah, Steph, Steph does this, Steph does that. He does everything right. But yeah, in my heart with what I'm thinking and when it lines up with what scripture is saying is not right it's just not right and like the last thing that I'm going to say when it comes to his righteousness it's his righteousness what he says is right like God is just that means he's always right He's always right. And the issue nowadays when like somebody is like preaching something or if like a fellow brother or sister in Christ comes to us and tries to call us out on whatever we're doing, we immediately have to be like, oh, well, that's just not something I'm comfortable with. That's not something that I want to do. Why are you trying to force me to do this? Why are you trying to make me think this way? This is my relationship with God. Yes, it's your relationship with God, but it's the same God. It is the same God. It's not like there's different gods for everybody. It's only one God. It's only one Christ. It's only one word. Like, it's only one. And if we decide within ourselves that I'm going to just halfway do it, I'm just going to a quarter of a way or just like I posted earlier, if you're doing it 99%, then it's nothing. Then it's pretty much denial. That 1% that you're denying is what's going to keep you away from the presence of God. It, it, we, we cannot, we cannot keep going like this. We have to seek the face of God. We have to seek his righteousness. Okay, I'm falling short in this one area. You know what, better yet, let me see what God has to say about this area and go after it. Let me go after this one area. Let me go after what God is trying to let me know regarding what I'm doing in my life. But for whatever reason, we don't want to feel uncomfortable. We don't want to let go of what we're used to. Oh, that's just the way that I am. Says who? You literally were not born that way. You weren't, you weren't born cussing. You weren't born sleeping around. You weren't born doing all these things that you're so used to. You weren't born that way. Whatever was presented to you, whatever you were exposed to is what caused you to now think that way. And when it comes to us saying, oh, that's just the way that I am, that goes to show that the way that you are does not line up with who, what God says that you should be and who you really are. Seek his righteousness. And at the same time, he says that we are his righteousness. Doesn't mean seek yourself. Seek God. Seek his righteousness. Start to conform to what he says. And you'll start to look like exactly what he says that you are. I love you guys.